Okay. So, in my opinion, the, the, the language, the architectural and, and the urban language of the Hungarian prefab housing is, is quite simplified in Hungary, was quite simplified in Hungary, and I suppose it's true uh, to the modernist era and the postmodernism as well. So now I, I will try to give you a, a short inventory of these very simple elements of postmodern prefab architecture. In, this, uh, in the industrial cities of Hungary, mainly in Budapest, there had been a permanent housing shortage from the last third of the 19th century. This could be only partly moderated between the two world wars and during the first two decades of socialism. As a type, uh, typical example, slum called Maria Valeria in Budapest still existed at the beginning of the 60s, whose barracks had been built after the World War I for military hospital. So far, it, be, it had become obvious that only industrialized housing construction would be capable to build enough flats within the foreseeable future. The so-called house factories started producing building elements from the middle of the 60s. During the golden ages of industrialized building era, uh, 10 large factories had manufactured large panels and another half dozen ones made smaller elements. Initially, two licenses had been bought, Soviet version of the French Camus system and the Danish Larsen Nielsen system. After a short test period, political decisions were made uh, for the Soviet French system, and eight more factories were installed with that. Countrywide, about um, seven, uh, 790,000 flats had been built with large panel technology. It was just at the end of the 50s uh, when Stalinist architecture called socialist realism uh, was rejected. During the next, de next decade, planners in Hungary could test the principles of Athens Carta for the first time in large scale in practice. This coincided with the economic point of view of the house factories. 10-story high, semi-high-rise uh, semi band buildings and point houses were, were uh, constructed in large estates. Apartments with good uh, sun exposure were well oriented, although quite small. As an example of Kőbánya Újhegyi State shows, housing projects of the 60s and 70s were large, monotonous and bleak. Yes, uh, estates built during the 60s uh, had, uh, had a high social status, but in uh, 1971, new housing distribution uh, rules came and segregation of housing estates had started soon. Meanwhile, critical voices get stronger. More and more people judge the plans, dominated by the economic standpoints, outdated theory of Athens Carta, and the small, badly organized flats were available just in a few variations. Tibor Tenke and his colleagues uh, wanted to put the new Temtin principles to Hungarian practice with the plans of Uipalota estate. Unfortunately, the usable uh, building types and the rigidness of the building industry prevented the breakthrough. H-type buildings built in the uh, outer, quart uh, outer quarters of Uipalota estate, planned by Zoltán Csorba, brought significant improvement compared with other prefab houses in the era. In these four-story high buildings, two 70 uh, square meters large apartments uh, were established on each floor, with French balconies on the facades. Unfortunately, this building type was not capable to spread countrywide because, uh, because it's relatively, uh, re <laughs> relatively high high costs uh, were above average housing standards. Only some dozen of the age types uh, were built in other estates. Tulip houses were constructed from uh, 1975 uh, in the Kishegyi state of Paksh for the workers of the first nuclear plant in Hungary. The planners were György Csete, the famous Hungarian organic architect uh, besides Imre Makovec, and his colleagues from the youth office of Pécsi Terv. They started to upgrade the uh, available prefab building types uh, in five uh, steps. At first, they embellished the facades uh, and the entrances with ornamental motifs based on Hungarian folklore. For the second step, ornaments were turned over the corners. And finally, they climb on the side panels of the balconies. 
After all, floor plans were started to be upgraded, creating real living space instead of small separated rooms. At last, Chet and his team was restrained to continue the Paksh experiment with new terrace houses, uh, ter terrace house types by modern architect and opinion leader Mate Mayor. Although Laszlo Nagy, famous contemporary Hungarian poet, tried to defend uh, tulip houses in the cultural press. But uh, reconstruction of house factories start, uh, no, sorry, <laughs> for the end of the 70s, critics about the existing practice of housing had been in, uh, intensified so strongly that decision makers could no more ignore them. As reconstruction of the house factories had been actual for that time, upgrading the apartment and building times, developing new products came into view. The aim was to create a wide spectral of apartment types, house types, and with different number of floors and a varied look. Uh, that is why the Ministry of Building and Urban Development had issued a document about directives for the long-term development of housing. Its main aim was uh, to sub stop segregation in new housing estates, but in parallel with this, it encouraged architects to form estates more varied, for example, with using traditional pitched roofs. The construction of house factories started at the beginning of the, the 80s. Apartments were in focus, and the rising of the panel spans were set as primary solution. Uh, conditions were created for, for manufacturing slabs with a span of uh, 420 and, four, and uh, to uh, uh, 540 centimeters instead of former 320 and 361s. System approach had become priority. The new apartment and section types allowed uh, many varies of the flats. The house factories in Bu of Budapest, together with the construction company number 43, performed a renewal program based on E-type prefab flat family, planned by Lakoterv at the end of the 70s. However, the construction company had stated that only uh, for the 55 uh, percentage of the new apartments could be could used could be used uh, the, uh, the the new long uh, panel slab. So, realization of earlier plans continued with the shorter ones. Pukutsa estate of Budapest, one of the first ones built by the new types, still keeps, it, uh, still keeps its value. Square meter prices are rel relatively high compared with other prefab estates of the capital. In addition to quite large apartments and affordable mix of flats, its very good location next to the Danube and its home, uh, homey site plan with open, block, uh, open frame blocks ensure its high prestige. In accordance uh, of principles of Athens Carta, prefab housing projects of the 60s and the 70s had been built with ribbon buildings and point blocks. From the beginning of the 80s, after previous critics and uh, in a harmony with spreading postmodernism, planners of prefab estates tried to create streets and squares again with frame mounted blocks of houses. Nevertheless, there were no available corner sections initially, as neither of Hungarian house factories had manufactured these types in that time. So planners had to turn ribbon sections at the corners as only solution. Siklosi estate of Pécs had been built with this technique, reflects earlier principles of super blocks in, uh, in its site plan. The block of public institutions lying in the center pedestrian zone of the super, super block is, uh, is surrounded by the blocks of flats. Owing to the reconstruction of house factories, manufacturing of real corner sections had begun. Some of them showed the traditional uh, perception of modernism. One, is, one of the sides was superordinate with a main facade. The other, an, another one was a subordinate role. An example of this corner style is Bekeut in Debrecen. Later, new types of corner sections appeared showing a classical urban corner with two eagle facades, emphasized with an outstanding tent roof, corner balconies, and a skirt around. Josef Attila estate of Újpest had been built with this kind of corner design at the gateways of the passage uh, intersected the block. Yes. 
State Construction Company of Hajdú Bihar Country and Planning Institute Keletterv also worked out a development program. As a result, they had become able to build uh, obtuse angled building sections and blocks with corners slaughtered at 45 degrees using them. Gloriette Estate of, in Budapest is characterized by these kind of octagonal spaces, known from the historic urban planning at the hub of the center avenue. These instruments were suitable for designing frame-mounted block, uh, no, no, sorry, <laughs> building sections uh, connected to each other in angle, allowed architects to plan winding ribbon buildings, just like the Crozier housing estate near Siklósi út of Pécs. Yes. These instruments were suitable for designing frame-mounted block houses forming streets with wavy closures. Tóczó Völgyi State in Debrecen is a unique housing project in Hungary, which had showed all potential inherent in prefab building technology. It was also a novelty that construction companies and house factories no more resisted to build houses with different number of stories, even within one block. Earlier it was rejected almost every time referring to the economy of craning. Tata Yut Estate in Budapest contained a block with different story levels, although houses formed the project was not progressive at all. For the end of the 80s, pitch roofs uh, has been hegemonic in Hungarian prefab housing. It carried opportunities for varied shaping, emphasizing corners and base with towers, and forming gable windows. Houses with five stories and pitch roofs show the mess similar to traditional urban block houses, but in some cases, 11 story blocks were built with tent roof, such as semi high houses of Kapostás Magyar Estate in Budapest, with a quite contradictional result. The reconstructing program of the house factories also aimed to create prefab buildings with more varied facades than the earlier ones. A wider spectra of openings, French windows, shutters appeared uh, uh, in the offer. Unique forming of balconies and lodges became possible, even with wood and balustrade, like at the, at the little Tarugató estate in Győr. In the preceding period, appearance of the facades had been determined by the gray or reddish colored concrete surface of the panels. In the 80s, plastering and coloring the panels became a common, commonly used solution, like on the three-story pitch-roofed prefab block houses in Ivutza of Sopron. Following the logic of industrialized large-scale housing and from an economic point of view, building of small estates with low houses was not a priority during the earlier decades of socialism, although some hundreds of flats were created within these kinds of projects. Finding a way out during the last decade before the regime change, industry players' attention was drawn to this sort of housing. From 1981, a model site had been developed in the Bereksas utca in Budapest, under the so-called small flat program. Many of Hungary's large industrialized construction companies showed their solutions to build row houses. Besides prefab panel technology, tunnel form work was also used at the small estate. During the 80s, large-scale estates with prefab row houses were built countrywide in many cities. Pava Utsa housing project in Győr included 55 chain houses. The higher two-story sections were linked by single-story tracts. The estate was planned by Karo Jurcik, an architect well-known in Hungary at the time. The row houses of Meta Utsa estate in Budapest were also built of pre uh, prefab panels. It brought a new selling model. While one part of the land were sold individually, side by side, the an another one uh, had been built with uh, state-organized row houses. The Abonyut estate in Solnok was unique as its planners had followed Scandinavian examples. Only pedestrian ways were established between the houses, while cars parked outside the site in a separate parking lot. 
Afterwards, a large row of garages were built up with a terrible look. Actually, the project showed the, the transitional period. The constructing company was willing to build the houses only by traditional technology instead of prefab panels. At the edge of the large Kassás Dülő estate in Budapest, a small group of English type row houses were built, showing the maximum could be brought from prefab building technology. With irregularly straggling sections, garrets below the saddle roof, plastered and colored facades, and romantic wooden balustrades. Nevertheless, average solvency demand was too low in Hungary to let this kind of houses spread in countrywide. And in the case of having enough money, clients rather choose traditional technology instead of prefab panels because of, the, uh, of their lack of prestige. Situation was also similar with family houses. Some attempts were taken to spread prefab panel technology on that, that field. Organized programs were started, for example, after some large and devastating fl floods with the aim, of, uh, aim to rebuild villages as fast as it was possible. And even design competitions were, un were undertaken to find the best type designs. But problems with the preferred row houses mu uh, multiplied in the case of building a family house. Specific costs were too high because of small series, while social appropriation of prefab technology were extremely low. Only a few ex examples is known as the prefab family house in Besenye Utsa in Budapest. The change of the political system in uh, 1989 had finally abolished prefab housing in Hungary. State-organized housing was eliminated in a half decade. Inflexible, mammoth-like house factories optimized to large-scale housing and used the half-century-old, outdated technology were not capable to manufacture up-to-date elements at competitive prices. Collapse of command economy has grabbed all prefab in the, uh, industry to grave. From the perspective of almost four decades, examining the experiments of the 80s to reform in the industrialized housing, it can be said that all efforts have been insufficient for the prefab industry to stay alive. While we can declare that prefab estates of that time are similar to other postmodern architecture of the 80s, ornamental elements mounted on the facades uh, have peeled off from the houses for the decades, Edifices without any function, like the decorative gate at Kapostas Magyar Estate, has been demolished. But human-scaled large housing projects built in an urbanized, urbanized way have been now integrated to urban pattern, and the flats of these estates still keep their value. Thank you. Uh, to presenting this wonderful collection or interesting collection on Hungarian prefab housing in the 80s. Uh, thank you. I wanted to know what is the situation today or what happened during the last decades toward those housing estate, at least the biggest one like Uiparota that are very close to the center, were they left alone or did some um, program uh, like, did they do something new on the building or around to make people want to live there still? Yes, uh, I suppose there was one or two decades after the, the change of the regime where this urbanization uh, made these estates quite uh, to, a, to a bad situation. But uh, in the last five or, or ten years, all the flats in Budapest uh, come to a to arise, or how to say, and even the panel uh, uh, flats. Uh, may, uh, uh, maybe I can say that, that the large uh, estates of the 60s and 70s uh, are not in a so good uh, situation that, that these kinds, but uh, mainly I, I suppose I can say that, that all the flats uh, are being uh, more uh, expensive. And of course there are some programs uh, to uh, renew this, this panel estates. Yeah, again, thanks for the talk. This is, I, this is fantastic. I'm super excited. Um, I, I could not believe, I cannot believe that 
it's possible to be so creative with prefabricated panel housing. It's like, it, this seems to me like the peak of prefabricated housing. It seems to me like uh, only in Hungary, uh, like architects and planners develop prefabricated flat panel housing into something so exciting. Um, is there anything comparable in the world? Because this seems so outrageous and so unique. And I'm really so grateful for you to present this because I haven't seen it. And I'm really excited about this. Thank you. But I suppose not now I am really surprised to hear that because uh, I, have seen, uh, I have seen many prefab houses uh, here in Eastern Berlin, which are uh, I suppose use the same technology, Camus system and maybe Larsen, Nielsen or, or the other ones. And, and they are really more urbanistic, how to say it, uh, uh, postmodern and, and urbanistic than Hungarian ones. Um, so I, I suggest you to go to Halle mm -hmm. in Eastern Germany. So there you can find a lot of prefabric houses, panel houses, in the old part of the, of the city. And uh, they are also very similar to this one, uh, I think from the 70s. And they try to make this, um, the scale of the old city and to connect uh, the new panel houses to, all, to the old part and uh, very creative solutions. So go there, Hollis, it's really great. Yeah, I'd also like to stress that Eastern Germany, that the, uh, in Eastern Germany, the, the development was quite the same, and uh, also the ways in which they try to adapt those prefab series to uh, urban context, but also architectural context. And my question to you would be: Was there also a theoretical debate on that? Well, I don't really know because, uh, uh, as I as you uh, yesterday. Uh, um, I don't really know uh, what in Eastern Germany was uh, an architect academy or, or so. Uh, in Hungary, I suppose there was um, no an academy like this. There was only an, an association of architects which were not in a very good uh, position. And there was only a ministry of, of building and, and, uh, and urban uh, development. And they uh, gave only a di directive without drawings or without plans to, okay, architects uh, try to build something, uh, something a bit better or something a bit more interesting, but it was only a, a second thing after the, the, the flat. So uh, it was said that, that the more varied and, and bigger flats are the most important, and after it, okay, you should try to, to make some, uh, something more interesting. And, uh, Maybe the architect collectives of the, the, the factories were the people who, who planned these kind of sections which were uh, capable for, for making these kind of estates. Thanks. I would like to ask, does uh, the end of the prefabrication mean the end of the city flats? I mean the, the invests to the city, city housing or public housing, I mean the owned by city? Uh, sorry? Does, does the end of the prefabrication, uh, because th that was uh, like public housing, yeah, I mean the block of flats, and when the prefabrication ended, does it mean that uh, all, uh, Budapest doesn't invest anymore uh, to the like public housing? I mean the, the flats which are owned by by city. I must. Yes, unfortunately, it is true. Uh, Budapest itself, and, uh, and so I can see that I can say that Hungary itself doesn't uh, make any more uh, state uh, housing projects. There are only uh, uh, some districts in Budapest where there are uh, new housing projects. Yeah, it's a great problem after the, the change of regime in Hungary. Um. Can I just add to that and ask, are there any uh, dense typologies being built right now that is like after the fall of communism? Is there anything like going on such as what we have seen is, is being done in Wrocław or so, uh, that we have dense type typologies in the inner city? Contemporary. Contemporary. Multi-story houses being built since the 1990s 
sorry, I'm not really sure how you want to this story. Yeah, well, that's what somebody has to get that good. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I just wanted to give the very same answer to the, to the previous comment to this question that it was interesting that there's no public investment for the apartments in Budapest, but we have the very, very same typology with these huge, big condominium buildings, 10, 15 uh, stories high, very dense, um, uh, small apartments, uh, complete new blocks uh, within the old uh, uh, city center of Budapest, uh, al alongside uh, the bank of the Danube, but it's all privately um, um, uh, generalized. I mean, it's privately, private, please again? It's Not really, they're freestanding, but they're big. They are really, really big. And if you, if you blur your eyes a little bit, you can confuse them with the panel blocks. That's what is interesting. So you don't have the grid system on the facade. You don't have the, this kind of gravy, concrete thing panel on the facade, but they are very, very repetitive and very, very similar to these ones. Okay, thank you very much, Abel, for this presentation.